I now invite the Premier of the Turks and Caicos Islands, the Honorable Charles Washington Visit. Thank you, Miguel. You know, relationship is everything. And um, so, how do I begin to tell the story of love between the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos? Let me start by thanking the Red Honorable Prime Minister of the Bahamas uh, for his friendship to the Turks and Caicos. And of course, that could be said uh, for the former leaders of the Turks and Caicos. And of course, uh, we the relationship is so deep that we now have these Turks and Caicos Bahamians and Bahamian Turks and Caicos Island serving in both of our parliaments. So whether we like it or not, it is happening. And so, at a time when the Bahamas was actually striving and when the salt industry, the one that the Prime Minister spoke about, was receding in Turks and Caicos, many of our people were invited uh, to, to, to the Bahamas and took up jobs, brought their families, and raised them here. I can speak for my own dad who spent three years up in a place called um, Pine Ridge, I think it is. Uh -huh. I don't know where that was the modern name for that place now. Um, but uh, the relationship between Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas spanned a whole spectrum of social and economic activities from medicine, business, uh, and, and you name it. And the good Lord has been very, very gracious to the Bahamas and to Turks and Caicos. Uh, both islands are a group of islands. We are a small archipelago within the Bahamas. We have 700 islands. I think we have 40 islands and keys located on the southeastern end of the chain. And we like to refer to Anagua and Meguana and that southern, those southern islands as the north, northwestern Turks and Caicos. <laughs> And uh, that may not be as far-fetched as it's saying, because I think as we work together, uh, it may be an opportunity to locate assets uh, in, different, in our different countries so that we can cross, uh, we can support each other across our economies and uh, in the social field. Um, you know, for many, many years, we've sent Turks and Caicos Islanders to the Bahamas uh, at the hospitals there. I think we still use Doctors Hospital for some of our patients uh, and conceivably given the proximity of Anagua and Mayaguana to TCI, uh, the future may determine that we also reciprocate with our facilities. Um, tonight I, I am here to tell you that I didn't come to this office as Premier of the Turks and Caicos Islands to be ordinary. Right? Uh, at my age, I can't afford to be ordinary. Right? Um, as my dad used to say when he was older, uh, he's not going to be any more man than he was at that time. So I'm not going to be any more man than I am now. And so I don't want to buy into narrow thinking. I, I believe uh, we have a uh, uh, bright, People among our diaspora who served globally. Uh, we have people uh, all over the United States, in the United Kingdom, uh, the Caribbean, but the bulk of our diaspora resides here in the Bahamas. And so much so that a lot of them don't even know where they came from. <laughs> I, I think a lot of Turks Island Bahamians are just discovering that their roots are in Turks and Caicos. And my last visit here, I ran into a number of persons who are 
explain to me or open up to me about their, their roots. Okay. TCI is, has a booming economy. At the moment, as I say, we're a tourism dependent country um, and we have um, tremendous opportunities both in terms of the uh, job market but also for those who may have uh, entrepreneurial abilities and skills and uh, resources and network. Uh, those opportunities also exist for you. And um, what is happening at home at the moment is that we are accommodating large numbers of expatriate workers uh, from all over the Caribbean and North America for that matter. Um, and one of the issues we face today is that the franchise, we are already, already outnumbered in TCI in terms of the proportion of our population to the different foreign nationals, and that is not going to get any better uh, soon uh, unless we decide to stop the progress of economic <coughs> development. And I can tell you right now by my reckoning, there's probably, uh, we have a good problem in that TCI is a very attractive for foreign investment. Uh, we probably have about $2 billion worth of investment in the pipeline at the moment. That means that over the next five to 10 years, we're going to require large numbers of uh, workers at different levels. Okay. Um, the government has taken as one of its major plank uh, human capital development. That is, investing huge uh, money in scholarships, in training, and uh, empowering our islanders by providing grants and small business support and such the like. Um, but there's only so many of us, and as the Prime Minister correctly said, there are probably more Turks and Caicos Islanders living in the Bahamas than living in Turks and Caicos. We have a function scheduled for Grand Bahama on Saturday evening, uh, and uh, we understand that it is oversubscribed by crap hundreds. Right? Uh, we have um, been lucky in that we have already recruited a number of persons from the Bahamas to work in, our, in the TCI, including persons who've come back to take on uh, middle management and management positions. Right? Uh, just in the last few months, we have uh, recruited um, um, electrical commissioners to uh, electrical commissioner from Grand Bahama. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, also the person that is assisting us in developing our airport in Providenciales is, uh, is Mr. Smith, whose uh, roots are from Turks and Caicos. And so I can go on. There are more and more Turks and Caicos, Bahamians, have taken their position, and in fact, a number of Bahamians. And so, the, the um, movements between the two islands, two island states, are happening whether uh, we officially endorse it or not. Uh, and, as I started by saying, relationships are important. If you look at what's happening across the world today, uh, it's all about relationship. If you look at the, what is happening with the United Kingdom having left Brexit, its economy has gotten so much worse. Right? Um, if you look at Ghana, Ghana has invited uh, African, people of the African diaspora from anywhere in the world to citizenship in Ghana. Right? There's nothing for us to be afraid of. The Turks, the, the Bahamas have 400,000 people, more or less, I understand. We don't really know the size of our population, but we estimated around 50 
thousand with the census going on at the moment. And among them, uh, back to the issue of the franchise, is about 9,000 um, deputy governor. We have about 9,000 voters. And um, so fortunately, more and more Turks and Caicos Island uh, Bahamians are getting their status cards. Um, because that's a big fear that we have, that we could lose a franchise. Uh, we are pushing against the um, I'm going to choose my word properly. Um, we're pushing against the probably desire of some, and maybe including the UK, to broaden the franchise. Uh, and so it's one of the few things that we have. And I would be lying to you if I didn't tell you that's part of the selfish motive of extending and, and working hard to make sure that we expand our franchise by by including uh, Turks and Caicos Islanders, of, of people of TCI heritage, to become a part of TCI and to qualify because you qualify for the status in TCI. Um, but also, um, the it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do to encourage a freedom of movement with the skills between the Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas. Uh, we already benefit significantly from the experience in the Bahamas. It's the go-to place that's expanding so rapidly that we estimate that we're going to need about 600,000 or 600 houses a year, at least for the next foreseeable future. And this is, in inviting people from the diaspora to come to TCI, this is my greatest fear in the, is that the shortage of accommodation for people to be able to, to, to if, if you want to move there. And so the government is making some speed in trying to deal with that problem. But we did have a visit, uh, Honorable uh, Davis, Jovan Kobe Davis, was kind enough to facilitate a visit from our housing department in TCI just, just very recently. And last week we had a team from the Bahamas uh, visiting with our uh, the Minister of Home Affairs uh, to look at uh, how we could divulge, devolve local government to the different islands so that the people who live in those islands will have a greater say in how they are operated. We are weak, but of course, as an overseas territory of the United Kingdom, we have to go through the diplomatic channel which tend to slow things down somewhat. But uh, Prime Minister Davis, uh, echoing the words of the Deputy Governor, I am forever grateful for the assistance and the work that the discipline, the effectiveness and efficiency of, the, of your police officers, um, Commissioner, and the officers in rank of the Royal Bahamas Police Force, uh, we are grateful for your help, and we had a tremendous meeting today about how we can collaborate going forward in the interests of both countries. TCI is on the southeastern end of the archipelago, and so with what is happening in Haiti today, where the, the whole country has descended into lawlessness, uh, a lot of cases uh, we receive the boat people first. We've been very uh, fortunate. We've put a lot of money and assets behind it. And so you may hear of large captures coming, but we, we, we're intercepting a lot of vessels before they land. But it's, it is costing us tens of billions of dollars a year to repatriate and look after them. So um, we have to, this is one area that we have to work on together. So uh, another, one of the other reasons why it's critical for us to have an office in the Bahamas, and while I remember, uh, the Minister for Foreign Affairs, Honorable Fred Mitchell, has indicated that it is also the governor of the Bahamas' intention to set up an office in Providenciales. Right? Uh, we have been friends for time immemorial. We've shared governors. 
up on 1974, up till 1973. We shared a governor, uh, and so the Caicos Islands were settled from the winds of the Carolinas. The loyalists from the south came here and went to TCI. I understand many of our records are in your archives. So, <laughs> so our past are inextricably tied, and I believe our future will be inextricably tied. Okay? 400,000 Bahamians, many of us who are dual citizens, by the way, I understand you don't allow that, but. <laughs> Many of you are Tip Turks and Gagas roots, and the 50,000 of us. And we need to come together as members of CARICOM, uh, uh, Prime Minister, and we, are, we will be applying for full membership of CARICOM. Awesome. But I... <laughs> I... I appreciate the collaboration when we go to these meetings, the Bahamas and TCI, we normally collaborate and try to make sure we take the same positions. Um, but within CARICOM, we are the Northern Caribbean. Not really in the Caribbean, but let us, for the sake of nomenclature, let us describe ourselves as that. Um, and we need to work together. And so, when I say I didn't come to this job to be ordinary, um, it's important to make some huge uh, steps to modernize our economy and modernize the way we do business. And um, one of the things I will be doing, I have a meeting tomorrow uh, with, um, and I'm visiting the, uh, your exchange commission, commission, I don't know how you call it, because what we are looking to do is establish a stock exchange in Turks and Caicos, uh, so we could cross-list investments, securities of, from TCI on the Bahamas and vice versa, so we could start investing in each other's economy. Uh, I don't know how many lawyers are in the room, but we have a bar association in which I think the, premier, the Prime Minister is a member of the Turks and Caicos bar, and so are other Bahamians. We have a number of Turks and Caicos islands that uh, uh, Bahamian attorneys and roots at TCI. I think that's a conversation we need to have as to how we can cross, how we can open up, can have a, a collaboration in terms of that area and some other areas. Um, so, um, and there are a list of other areas that I think we can collaborate and achieve economies of scale for the benefit of our people. So, the small step that we are taking uh, here now to establish a physical presence in the Bahamas uh, will not only allow our Turks and Caicos Islanders or people in the Bahamas with roots in the Turks and Caicos to be able to process documents including uh, uh, facilitating them to, to be able to um, process land titles, birth certificates, uh, all of those other uh, critical uh, bits and pieces of documentation that they will need, uh, but also uh, allow us to formalize our relationship with the Bahamas. When we were last year, we spoke about actually signing a, a friendship agreement with the Bahamas. That is something we will continue to pursue with the foreign ministry here in the Bahamas. Uh, the our doors are open, as I say, job opportunities, uh, investment opportunities, um, are in TCI, and because of the pool of our population, we have to look from outside. So it's natural that we look in this direction. And you may not believe it, uh, Prime Minister, in the same way you've had pushback assisting us with the, the support of the police office. There are those persons who would want to um, pretend that um, 
the road that we are traveling and tapping into our diaspora in the Bahamas is not a good thing. I think it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, my office is, is open. Um, we, Miguel Son, who came from Grand Bahama and others, um, are available. One of the things we're looking to, to do in TCI is to actually set up a citizen hotline so that what we can't do here, uh, we will be able to provide information from there. But I am very, very happy. I feel very at home here in the Bahamas. I walked through the crowd of people a while ago, and I'm absolutely stunned how many people I remember. And you know, I have cousins here, I have friends here, uh, people who I've been seeing for many, many years. There's one person who said to me, I look different. I said, yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> But um, my, my, my wife, uh, who is from both Salt Key and Grand Turk, uh, has a lot of family here. Um, right? And so we're very happy to be here. Thanks very much for the hospitality. We always have excellent hospitality visiting the Bahamas. And just, we will uh, use uh, your protocol office to help us because uh, I've traveled all over the Caribbean, right? And the Bahamas is the best in terms of protocol. So um, I don't. Uh, I would give you an opportunity since we've come this far, and uh, give you an opportunity. If anyone have a question for me uh, that I haven't covered, I'm happy to answer a few questions um, from. Anyone from the diaspora and others from the media, anyone, I'll give you an opportunity to answer a few questions that you may have that I may not have dealt with. Carolyn, how you doing? <laughs> um, okay. Um, basically, the, I would say extremely successful. Uh, last year we had um, 33 murders, and um, people were scared out of their wits because it was totally unprecedented. Uh, the um, uh, the your police officers melded seamlessly with ours. They brought a a some experience and expertise which they were able to share with our tactical unit. Uh, they were boots on the ground for us. And of course, having shared the same heritage, uh, they understand that the culture of the place. Uh, we have some of the same issues that you have. Uh, you call them shanty towns or shanties. We call them informal settlements or yards. And so they were able to maneuver through those places. And the person who had in that team, um, if, uh, assistant commissioner of police, strong, um, did a fantastic job in leading his men. And so much so that uh, we are hoping that we can cross fertilize their experience with the, with the uh, Bahamas Police Force so we can continue to, to operate together in not only assisting TCI, uh, but also from an intelligence point of view, at any rate, being able to help the, the Bahamas Police Force. Okay. I'm, I'm told that um, we don't want to give people indigestion by having them eat too late, so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll stop here unless there's, unless there's a real burning question. I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you.